welcome, 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 welcome back. Uh, my wonderful kings and queens, thank you so much for staying with us. Thank you so much for being a part of brunch, a taste of Tobago. Now, do you remember I told you or I indicated that we were going to be talking so much about writing and liter literary devices and, and, and poetry and all of that good stuff? There are two wonderful guests. I have two wonderful guests with me. Uh, sitting on the on the brunch couch today uh you may know these faces but i'm going to introduce them all the same and let me tell you about these ladies these ladies are immensely immensely talented and have so many accolades to their names so with me i have um miss cheryl did i say it right how do you um, pronounce your last name um Usorio Wheeler Tabiti. <laughs> okay, so it's Usorio Wheeler Tabiti. Tabiti. Okay. And I sort of grew up with this. This was a household name for me. When you were talking about art and theater, this is a name that you would always hear. So I'm privileged to be sitting with this lady today. And my other guest is like a sister from another mister. I am so privileged. I, I met this wonderful lady, uh, I would say some months ago. It, 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 it was some months ago. And we actually had like a, a, a short performance segment. Did not know that she was into that sort of thing. So I was very pleasantly surprised. Uh, welcome, Ms. Joelle Green George. And she is the PRO of the Tobago Writers Guild. Did I get that? No. Did I get that right? I'm the PRO. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Just walk PRO, me through it. Yeah, so I'm the PRO of the Tobago Book Club. Right. I'm the president of the Tobago Writers Guild. All right. So yes. president, <laughs> I got my P's mixed up. I'm so sorry. So it's president. Yes, of the Tobago of Writers Tobago Guild. Writers Guild. PRO. Of book the club. club that's All right. right yeah forgive me it's been it's been a day i have i'm so honored and privileged to have them here um so what we're going to talk about and then i'm going to open the floor uh so that joelle and auntie cheryl as i call her can give their their piece on what is really really going on so i i remember i, I told you we were going to be talking about um authors did you know that there are authors, uh, Tobagonian authors, who are critically acclaimed, accomplished, and have shaped the fabric of Tobago uh, with their literary work that you and I may never know or have any type of information about? Now, the book club is geared towards making us very much aware and giving us a sense of pride in what is Tobago. So I am very privileged to have my, my honorary guests uh, here with us. So, Miss Birchwood. You can call him, just say Miss Cheryl and he'll make it so auntie, easy. Auntie, I Cheryl. auntie. So I'm, I'm gonna continue to do that, <laughs> all right? So Auntie Cheryl, tell me uh -huh. a little mm -hmm. bit about this project now i know that you have been doing um playwright for some time now mm -hmm. and so just give us a little backstory on that i also wanted to touch on i saw a play that you did um a play by that esteemed author mr eric roach who we are going to talk a little bit about as well um belfanto i would have seen you, uh, the Tobago right, uh, Drama Guild did uh, Belfanto, I think it was for Best Village. And I was privileged to see that. I was privileged to see the depth and, and the, you know, expression and, and, and heartfelt nuances of the actors who were involved. So give me a little backstory on um, your experience as, as a playwright and how you got into doing the work of, of author Eric Roach. But before she starts, 
Mm -hmm. I want to just introduce her properly, right? Okay, I want, why? I want, okay. I want our viewers, you know, in Trinidad and Tobago and across the Caribbean, to know who Miss Uzoro is. So Miss Uzoro is a retired principal of Goodwood High School. So all you students out there, say hi to Miss Uzoro if you haven't seen her for a while. Right, she's the co-founder and administrative director of the Tobago Drama Guild. In 2021, she was the Tobago Day Awardee, Chief Secretary Silver Medal of Honor for long and meritorious service in culture and arts. And in 2018, she won Best Actress Award at the Prime Minister's Best Village Trophy Competition. 2016, the Tobago World Festival Award for contribution to the literary arts. And in 2004, um, the recipient of the Ansa McCall Tobago Secondary Schools Drama Festival Icon Award for Outstanding Contribution to Culture. Now, I have, I have loads more to read, but, you know, we don't have all the time. So oh I just goodness. wanted to She's introduce her, all day right? So I just wanted to introduce oh Auntie, Auntie Cheryl. Auntie Cheryl, for me. <laughs> yeah, Auntie, Ch Auntie <laughs> Cheryl is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Um, thank you, uh, Mrs. Joel Green. And thank you, Miss Jester. Yeah. Yes. Is that it right? Yes. <laughs> I know you've liked for forever. And yes. I want to say before <laughs> anything else, I am proud of our young people. Oh, you all are doing so well. And the battle will be passed on to people of integrity, um, people who study the work. And that matters. Yes. Because I'm an educator. Mm -hmm. You want to know who, who am I? Yes, I'm an artist. Yes, I do theater and all of those things. But I want to say, first and foremost, I'm an educator. Mm -hmm. I believe in lifelong learning. All those things you read and all of that, yeah. I, I, um, if I stop right here, um, at this point in time, I stop growing. You know, it's important for me growth and development and for me particularly for the youth. You are going to own this space, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's time um, to get our young people working mm -hmm. and growing, developing, creating, you know, enjoying, critiquing. Mm -hmm. That is so, so very important. Im yes. important, you know, because before you know it, this will become in memoriam. Yeah, <laughs> you yes. understand? Because our time here is short. I yeah. so get over that part. Now, as an educator and I when I came back from Canada I started off at um, Signal Hill at that time it was senior comprehensive and it no, and then it became Signal Hill secondary I started off there and I was teaching English at was at one time PE and I morphed into theater arts even though it was not on the syllabus. And I want to thank um, Orville London mm -hmm. for allowing me. <laughs> he saw that urge and he saw that certain things were working. He is a man of vision, I must tell you that. Forget about politics, he's a man of vision. And I, I want to say thank you, Orville London. I appreciate you and for allowing me. You see, when I got to um, Signal Hill, I recognized that there were a lot of boy boys. We say we boy children. Mm -hmm who were not performing, misbehaving, and they were going to, they were going to fall through the cracks. Mm -hmm. And in my reflection, I said, there must be a way to save our youth. And I wonder, how do I get to them? I was teaching English. Mm -hmm. And you would see the marks for, the, for, the, for a lot of the boys right at the bottom of the class. And I said, listen, you have to reach them. Yeah. You had to reach them somehow. Eventually, they used to call me the English specialist, or the, or, and all the, the boy children, if they're miserable or whatever, they just send them by me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The boy children yeah. who are doing well, they send them by somebody else. Yes. So then, I either get frustrated, mm -hmm. give up, and, and go the routine, or say, how do or, or figure out there must be another way. Mm -hmm. you know? So then I decided, listen, what do I know? I know theatre. What saved me? I would say theater because mm -hmm. I know myself and I know a personality. You know, the A title keep on going and going and going and on. And yeah. So a little bit of attention span deficit. And I recognize it in many of the boys. Mm -hmm. And then I sit down and figure out what do you, what do they like? To find out what they like, I ask them. So I would be always huddled 
with them. My lunchtime wasn't my own. Mm-hmm. It, belonged to, it belonged to the young people. And a lot of the, um, of the boys I would call, what do you want to do? What do you like? So, and then I said, uh-huh, theater. Mm-hmm. So we had some, um, some young people. Uh, one, one young man, about a, a decade later, came to me saying, Miss, you know one lesson I remember? When um, we, we, you created a theater scenario and we were dealing with groceries, I did not know that his father owned a, 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 a grocery. Mm-hmm. And oh, that, that, impa- that impacted on him. So he used that theater to become interested in the English. Next thing, um, the, the, the authors that, uh, that we, we deal with. In those early days, I'll, I'll not, they weren't all um, our own people, Caribbean people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you, you ask these people to identify with something out there. When they didn't get a chance to appreciate what is yeah. here. Monsieur Zorro, I like what you're talking about in mm-hmm. terms of using drama to give young people um, some purpose and mm-hmm. direction. Mm-hmm. And I even like the, the trend you're going on when we're talking about recognizing our local talent. Mm-hmm. Because one thing that we recognize in the book club, and we've started a program that we're allowing local writers and authors to submit their books to us so that they are able to have their books read by the book club. And we've Wonderful. been focusing this year mm-hmm. on local writers and authors. I mean, it's lovely to have the Guild. Um, the Guild really supports local writers. But then when you have your book, you need readers, mm-hmm. right? Exactly. And that's where the book club comes in. The book club is like a handshake for the Writers Guild. Mm-hmm. The book club is um, a handshake for writers, full mm-hmm. stop. Mm-hmm. So, Point you know... You need, you don't just need to write, you need to have somebody to read your work. Exactly. And we need to read more, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of times you just don't have the time to read. Mm -hmm. But I know you have been reading this Calabash of Blood script by Eric Roach. You all have been (laughs) reading this for a few years. Yes, yes, yes. Because last year, February, um, my husband and I came and saw Calabash of Blood at the Tobago Drama Guild house. Yeah. And we want to get into this script, and we, we don't just want to get into the script as a play, but we want to expose and talk about Eric Roach, the writer, because what he did is really, um, he has a, a colossal body of work. He has 110 poems mm-hmm. that Indeed. they've put mm-hmm. in a book, and he also has four plays. Calabash of Blood is one of them. One there of are them. three mainly mm-hmm. known plays, but I discover there's another one. Um, the new dancers of the dooryard. Mm-hmm. They have another. When you when it. you find that one, yes. please share. Please share that with me. Yes. Uh, Miss, Miss, I want to say something. I um, I know a little long with it with the young people and you too, but for me, it matters so much. I have a passion for that, mm-hmm. you know. So and I just wanted to say that that is where it started, yeah. you know. And bringing it back now, I guess we will have other times to talk about yes. all of, uh-huh. and the edu- and the part of the education and all of that because mm-hmm. there's a lot to be said. Uh-huh. But bringing it back to the now. A calabash of blood, Belfanto. I did Belfanto. I was standing mm-hmm. Belfanto and all of that. Yeah. But if you want young people to read, um, one, of course, you, you have to have the, I could say, the colossal um, you know, you know, compendium of work. Yes. You have to have the body of work there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, but sometimes you have to work for quality. Yeah. Because I just have a whole sort of thing yeah. there. You know, educating is ma- uh, matters too. Yeah. How do you write? Who, um, who do you write for? Yeah. And all of that, you know, um, some of us are we afraid of being um, critiqued. We throw <laughs> yes. everything out there and whatever. And then in not? our society, we have a way of patting each other in the back for, mm-hmm. medi- for mediocrity. You understand me? Ouch. If you come and you see my, 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 um, my work, I did blood money. If you saw flaws, come and tell me. Don't just, just don't all give me superlatives. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yes. Yes. But, you know? But but uh, so and that is how I started writing. I would mm-hmm. watch and I would gauge my audience because I had to interest those same boys I was talking about. Mm-hmm. I had to keep I had to keep them engaged. I had mm-hmm. to know what interests them yeah. in, in my society. I had to be reflect on my society. How mm-hmm. can we make it better? What are the issues? How can we tackle it and to make it palatable? It has to be relatable. Yeah, to yeah. Age, Miss, you have it. Yes. It must <clears throat> be relatable. You don't have a body of work all over the place. Mm-hmm. Yes. You understand me? And and well, I kind of hit and miss 
and all of that. Sometimes I, I, our society is new. We don't have time. For, we don't have the luxury of time, you know, mm. to be just throwing all those things. Rich people who do that. Mm. Where and our, our, our societies that are that are so old that they, they have all these little niches. So we could afford to have those kind of a spaces where mm. we all right. We just read the, the thing and whatever. I, I, yeah. yeah, but no, we where we at? We had to make the quantum leap. So a calabash. Of blood yeah. by Eric Roach. That piece of work. It. I mean. I'm. Yes. I am playing a role um, in, in it, but I feel it in the core mm -hmm. because it it speaks to our people, yes. our history, our angst, what it is. Um, that make us do certain things in a certain way. Male, female communication, you know, um, the old and the young, how we relate. Black, white, yellow, the different, um, the, the, the colors of our society, mm -hmm. the cultures of our society, our ethnicities, how we relate to each other, how we feel about ourselves, how we feel about our bodies, our color, the and color of our skin. Innermost thoughts. Yes. Mm -hmm. All, All of, of come that. I tell you, when I, when I play my role of Mamba, and there are certain areas where I'm so transformed, I forget about Auntie Cheryl, you know. Yes. I get absorbed into Eric Roach's work. Eric Roach is a genius. Mm -hmm. All right, and on that note, we're going to take a quick break <laughs> yeah. and we're going to come back and speak some more about that accomplished author, Mr. Eric Roach. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with brunch at Taste of Tobago. <laughs> This is how it's gonna go. They better look up and look. Cause this is your show. And everybody's gonna know. Say it to them once again. They better look up and look. This is your show. This is your show. Everybody who live worrying, worrying. Never ever worry. Don't mind how things looking hard. I tell them never ever worry. If your life nice, can't get damaged bad. I tell them never ever worry. What I'm saying is true. So just consider that hill is always right here for you. I tell them never ever worry, don't mind if life make you sad I tell them never ever worry, if your house get flood out real bad I tell them never ever worry, what I'm saying is true So just consider, that hill is always right here for you I tell them never ever worry, if sickness catch you off guard I tell them never ever worry, if time fall on you real hard I tell them never ever worry, what I'm saying is true So just consider, Tattle will always be here for you Never worry, never worry about a thing Tattle, where people are people You know what I mean Looking for a place for your loved ones? Heavenly Care welcomes you. Located at Northside Road opposite Massey Motors, we offer a variety of services. These include doctor visitations, social activities, geriatric care, and much more. Contact us at 277-9595 or visit us at Northside Road opposite Massey Motors. At Heavenly Care, compassion is at the heart of all care. Are back folks oh wow it has been an awesome awesome day so you guys remember that trivia question right uh which british novelist wrote a book on tobago 
we did have uh an answer oh we actually had more than one thing oh my gosh it is that kind of day so i'm gonna go back let me go back so i give you the right information all right so for the painting yes for the painting someone was we were asking the viewers to let us know what type of flower that was all right some person said shakonia they weren't quite right but we have a winner uh Mesia or Mesia. I hope I'm saying it right. M-A-E-C-I-A. Mesia Samuel. I'm just gonna hold the painting up. So all right. So Mesia Mesia Samuel is the winner of this wonderful painting. It is in fact a ginger lily yeah um done by the wonderful miss ascala george and of course um if it means anything i helped yeah i helped her with the painting yeah if it means anything you know what i love you guys thank you so much for being with us so miss um Mesia samuel um one of our crew members will reach out to you and get your particulars but you are our winner for today so i'm just gonna rest this back and as we go back uh, as we go back to this amazing book club let me tell you there's so much in store you don't even know this is just the beginning i want to draw your attention though uh to these lovely bottles of wine on the table the reason that I want to do that is because I feel that I need to just say or just put it out there that these are local distributors. These are local entrepreneurs. Yeah, that are doing wonderful things um, in Tobago. So right about now, I'm going to hand you over right back. To my lovely, lovely, lovely co-host for this segment, Miss Jewel, Mrs. Jewel Green George, and she's gonna go into it a little more about the wine, and she's gonna take you on that little journey with some information, additional information that she wants to share. So I'm gonna hand you over to Jewel. Jewel, take it away. Well, thank you, Janelle. <laughs> You're most welcome. <laughs> So I just want to talk about this wine a little bit. I want to thank Sweet Hand Wines. That's a good friend of mine, Gemma. And Gemma does really good local wines. She has this mango wine that we're having here today. Miss Yuzura and I are having some mango wine. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> right. We want to cheers with Let Janelle. Cheers well. Yes. Yes. We're not going to tell you what she's. Yeah, we're not going to tell you what like. Janelle is drinking. No. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a trivia question for this segment. So if you want to win this bottle of wine here on the table, right? All you have to do is put in the comments what play, and there are four of them. So just name one. One play that Eric Roach wrote. So and I'm just, I'm just going to scooch over. Yes. And when you put your and say in the comments, you're going to win this. We have a Vanna White. We are going to win <laughs> this beautiful, delicious, very intoxicating. It's 15% alcohol, people. You've got to be careful. So, Sweet Hand Wines, Gemma from Canaan, she does these wines. She has a, listen, she has a fantastic listing of wines. So, if you want to get it, get this wine today. We're going to leave the number with the studio. So if you want to find out more about the wine, you can call and make some orders. But what we want to get into now is the idea of having ourselves as Caribbean people, as Tibagonians, seen on the stage. You know, we had um, the debut of Africa Film TT last month in Tobago. Mm -hmm. And what happened for that was something so fantastic. I myself never realized how important it is for us as Caribbean people, as, you know, melanated people, people with textured hair, people with, you know, textured lives, to be able to see ourselves on film. And I was talking to Asha, the director, and she was telling me, um, she is the founder, and, the founder and director of African Film Titi. And she was saying, you know, there it needs to be urgency 
for us to see ourselves. We, we you know, we don't have the, uh, the, the, we don't have the time to just sit and wait around for perhaps somebody to come around and put us on TV. Yes. We have to do it ourselves. And that's what we are doing with Miss Yuzuru and the Tobago Drama Guild. That's what they're doing. They're not just putting us on, on, you know, on the big screen because they go to Canada and do different plays. But what they're doing is allowing us the opportunity to see ourselves by using a Tobago writer, a Tobago playwright. You know, he was born in 1915. We, yes. You know, this, this man had a fantastic, he lived during a fantastic time, 1915 to 1964. And they're using his plays to depict what's happening in life right now, mm -hmm. to represent us as Tobago people. And we need more Tobago voices on the stage. We don't need, you know, foreign plays only. We need our own plays. So I want you to tell, there's a particular person in the play. When I saw, um, when I saw Calabash of Blood at the Drama Guild, mm -hmm. right? I, I just given them one character. We won't sell out the full plot. Mm -hmm. But there's somebody called Kanga. Ah. Kanga and his wife. And uh, by the way, Kanga's wife, when I went, was played by the lovely Simone mm -hmm. Navarro, a school friend of mine. I was so proud of her. But tell me about this Kanga. Kanga and his wife, they, they're an interesting couple. All right. Mm -hmm. now, I want to hear about them. I'll tell you something. I, well, Eric, you know, is a wordsmith. Mm -hmm. I, I, he, I mean, he is a class above the rest. We're talking quality. Um, Kanga, I believe Kanga was created and morphed mm -hmm. because there is a poem about Kanga. Miss, you have that poem there? I believe yes, I have. The ballad. Let us, yeah, let us read that ballad. If it. you want to understand Kanga, we read the ballad and then we take a spin or from that. I know I printed it. I have it here. And you have it there? All I, right. I, I'm ready. Miss Joel, Miss Joel, <laughs> she's yeah, ready. Yeah, man, you're ready for this stage? Yes. Kanga, take it away. Take it away. <laughs> Ballad of Kanga by mm. Eric Roach. Kanga Brong is coming down, stilted on, le on his legend, taller than a tall man, living beyond his end. He is an old Ashanti man, full of wickedness. Bring Obia straight from Africa. But he cursed Don't Bless. They gang him in the cane field. Wouldn't raise a straw. Get up and work, old man. Look sharp. Work not for Kanga. They tie him to the whipping post in the great house yard. Bring whip, big whip, peeling off his back. The missus bawling hard. Kanga working obi a bad, throwing all the pain. Hotter than he get it on the background woman. They let him go. Chase him. To maroon in the bush. Go, you worthless nigger. Let hungry eat your flesh. But Conga, Kanga go and sit down by a tamarind tree. Be drum and call Dambala till his belly hungry. He plant a planting sucker, fill a tub with water, fish mullet with the water from the water, cut planting in one hour. Ah yes, Kanga. <laughs> <laughs> And, and and there's also something about Kanga Brong and all of that. I don't even know if that's related. But I will tell you, um, when Eric Roach did this poem, it was creating and crystallizing his plot for a calabash of blood. Because the the whole bit of mysticism wasn't with Kanga, you know. It was with his wife, Mamba. Mamba is the one who shouted at the end, Dambala! Invoked all his spirits. Right. You know? But here he has um, Kanga because he is thinking, he's creating. So, he has, so there's, there's a pocket of this and a pocket of that. But he did not ascribe all of that to Kanga. Mm -hmm. Yes, Kanga was tied um, to the whipping post. Kanga was a proud. African, he was enslaved, but a proud African. And he had respect for mysticism. He had respect for his wife. Yeah. He knew that she could brew poisons. And you could say, oh, you know, Obia has a bad, a bad name, but no, not, not in their time. Probably not now. That was just, uh, just um, changing forces in nature, being mm -hmm. able to manipulate. You know, so Kanga appreciated that. 
spiritualism. Even though he didn't have all of those powers, his wife had the powers and he would speak with reverence about those powers. So he accepted that. Yes, he was tied to the whipping post. And Kanga was a, was a someone of dignity, right. his languaging and all of that. And some of his famous words, you want to see the black body bleed and suffer. And on that note, mm -hmm. we are going to wrap uh, for today. We would love to have you back. We have to talk some more about Kanga. We have to talk some more about Mr. Eric Roach and his work. Um, let's just go to the trivia question. Uh, the first question that we had, uh, which famous English novelist wrote about Tobago? That was Mr. Daniel Defoe. That's the answer to that question. Who got it? We are going to find out. But the answer to that question is Daniel Defoe. Oh, nobody got it. Nobody got it. I'm so sorry. Better luck next time, as they say. Um, we are very privileged uh, to be on air with these two wonderful women, like I said before. Um, join us again on brunch. We are here on Friday. Uh, tune in. Remember, get your coffee, get your biscuits, your donuts, have fun, and let us take you on a journey. Stay tuned for more of the book club yeah. next week, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be here with my sister from another mister, Miss Joel Green George, and we're going to take you on a journey. Before we go, Janelle, I want to make sure two things. All right, so, so one we, thing before we go. Yes, so before we go, we have um, a play coming up from the Drama Guild on July the 8th. So if you have never seen A Calabash of Blood, you need to get here, right? Get to the Drama Guild. And they're on Facebook. Just look up Tobago Drama Guild and you're going to find them. Next week, Wednesday, we're going to have with us Mr. Clement Williams. He's the author of Vintage Images of Tobago. And these are all going to be, you know, back in the day. So if you have a granny or auntie, listen, let them tune in next week. Wednesday, they're going to be seeing the old cinema, the old this, the old that, where, you know, Uptown, where um, James Park used to be. This is where we need to be at next week, Wednesday, for Book Club Corner. And that's it for today. There you have it. Joel, I could not have said it better myself. Thank you so much for being here with us. Oh, Auntie Cheryl, a pleasure. I thank love you. you. I you, love you. you. I you, love you. you. Can love I say something for a few seconds? One more the thing. Go ahead. Diaspora, the Outreach Network. They are the sponsors of that production on Saturday 8th of July 2023 at the Guild House. I'll give you a phone number 729-2235. Come there and support local theatre. Thank and you. There you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless and take care each and every one of you. This was brunch. Mm. <laughs>